Natalia, would you please like to introduce yourself to start off with? Okay, uh, so my name is Natalia Berloff. I'm a professor of applied mathematics here at DAM. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us how and when did you choose to do mathematics? Um, age about 10, the usual age <laughs> for this kind of thing. Um, it just happened. I was reading tons of books, you know, shelves after shelves. Um, and on one shelf, there were a lot of books about mathematics. Uh, some were for children, like explaining graph theory. And I think I was suddenly completely taken by, by the theory, by how, um, how logic works to actually solve kind of unsolvable problems on, on graphs. So that was the beginning. And then um, I grew up in Russia, so we had very well-developed Olympiad movement in mathematics. So I started winning on various levels. And once you get to some kind of a country level, then big players like Moscow State and um, Landau School start taking the notice of those people. So that's how I got lured into this wild world. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what's it like in particular being a female mathematician? Um, being a mathematician and then, you know, female or male, I don't know, it makes such a big difference. We define by our profession. Good. So, since you say that, is there any advice that you would give to a young woman wanting to enter mathematics, or do you think the advice is equal for both genders? I think it's equal. I have a boy and a girl, a son and a daughter, so I give them the same advice, you know. What's your advice? Um, advice is that being good in math opens a lot of possibilities. You don't have to be a mathematician, but knowing mathematics opens the road for any sciences physics, chemistry, biology, you can do whatever you want. And for you, what are the joys of doing mathematics and what are the challenges? Um, treasure hunt. In, which, in what sense? No, but I mean, that's exactly what we do. So we're trying to, you know, to find our jewel, to find the treasure. In a sense, we have some leads, we're solving the problem. And there are hints, leads, you know, but you need to find this, this holy grail. And then you start using different tools. You start learning different tools, you know, different machinery that probably will help you to discover. To discover. Um, and then it's also, I think, um, we, at, at first, when you start being in, ma in mathematics or in physics, you start finding these little jewels, right, little things, and you're very happy. But the more you go, the more you're really looking for a big thing. So, and that's, that's what, where the excitement is about, just expecting that you know, you'll have this big breakthrough. Okay, and could you explain what your area of mathematics is about? Uh, it's applied mathematics. So I'm writing equations and trying to understand the physical system. In my case, quantum fluids, superfluidity, Bose-Einstein condensation, and try to, for a given physical system, it could be liquid, it could be gas, it could be even solid state. I'm trying to write down the equations that describe the motions, that describe the phenomena observed, and then I'm in close contact with experimentalists trying to see if my theory works and what else, you know, what else they present that, you know, it still doesn't fit in into the model so I can extend it and um, build a new one. Okay. And um, could you describe one of your favorite mathematical moments, mathematical experiences that you've had? Mm -hmm. Uh, there were many. Uh, we have the first one again was when I, in this book that I mentioned, that I read when I was 10, there was this problem of given a set of points, uh, a graph is a set of points with edges in between. So like a network. A network. network. Um, is it possible to actually go along every edge just once without taking your, your pen off the paper? So very simple problem. And the answer is brilliant, as it seemed to me when I was 10. And the answer is you count every node and how many passes are going out of the node, uh, out of this node. And if it's odd, it means that you will be able to start, go around, come, and leave. But if it's, odd, it's even, then you come, go, come, and go. It means that only the graphs where you have two nodes with odd numbers is actually satisfy the property that you can go and you have to start at the first odd and finish at the other one. 
So, so a that surprisingly is, simple. That is very that is simple, um, and you know. But before you try various graphs, and you see that you know sometimes you don't know why it works. Maybe why it doesn't work. Maybe you just didn't find the right way how to go between the points. But you know, at the end, when you understand, and it makes perfect sense, right? And then you think, oh wow, now I can solve any problem because I know the, this trick. And I think for for me being ten, this was kind of memorable moment. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.